Hey everyone, it's Mike from Orderflows here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for today's video where I'm going to be talking about you know fresh liquidity coming into the market as opposed to resting liquidity, which is orders that are sitting in the order book, right? And if you're looking at a dome or depth of market, you know, you're looking at the resting liquidity. But what I want to focus on today is the fresh liquidity, the liquidity that is constantly coming in and um, by, by fresh liquidity, I'm going to be focusing in on the big bids or big offers. And in, in this video, I'll be talking about the big bids coming in. All right. So before I get started, you know, before I jump in, if you enjoy learning from my videos, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. So, you know, when I post a new video, you'll be notified of it so you won't miss it. And if you find today's video helpful, hit the like button and, you know, leave a comment below sharing your biggest takeaway. You know, I love hearing your feedback. All right. So liquidity okay and fresh liquidity what fresh liquidity is is it refers to new buy and sell orders that are coming in on the bid or the offer right people that provide liquidity to the market you know people that buy at the market or sell at the market are removing liquidity but when someone comes in and bids you know places a bid or places an offer they are providing liquidity okay and you know this influx of fresh orders right you know it helps replenish and sustain the overall liquidity in the market. And, you know, the reason why fresh liquidity as opposed to resting liquidity um, is important is because it improves, um, you know, I don't want to say uh, trading opportunity, but, you know, when there's lack of liquidity, you know, market's going to move around pretty quick, right? Because the market is always searching for liquidity. All right, so today in the S&Ps, um, there was a good example of fresh liquidity that failed. And I'm going to talk about, I'll show you an example of fresh liquidity that held. And really, when you're, you're dealing with fresh liquidity coming into the market, you want to notice, is it holding or is it failing? Okay, that, that's the key. Because if it's holding, right, if fresh liquidity comes in on the bid and it holds, you're going to expect the market to go up. If fresh liquidity comes on the bid, meaning a strong bid, and it fails, you're gonna be looking for the market to go down. And, you know, is one more important than the other, you know, one that holds and one that fails? Well, when it holds, it could often indicate a reversal. If it fails, it could just be, um, you know, a sign that the market has some strength, directional strength, and, you know, it's probably gonna continue going down, right? If it's a fresh liquidity on the bid, which today there was, um, that you know that there's strong selling, right? It's just overrunning whatever buying took place in the market on the passive bids. Okay, so you know, just really quick, you know, I made a video the other day talking about the difference between um, passive buyers and passive sellers, and aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, right? Anything that is on the bid and below is passive buying. Anything that's on the offer and above is passive selling. Aggressive sellers sell to passive buyers. Aggressive buyers buy from passive sellers. And on the footprint, right, if it trades on the bid side, that was a passive seller that bought from an aggressive seller, okay? Again, you know, there's always... If you have an aggressive seller, he's selling to a passive buyer. If you have an aggressive buyer, he's buying from a passive seller. And today, this morning, in the S&Ps, there was some big fresh liquidity that came into the market here. It came in here at 52.05, came in again at 52.03, and just recently it came in at 52, um, what is it, 5200. A couple times here. Where are we? Uh, here. Okay, so market's dropping. Okay, let's just uh, for reference, let's take a look here at the the bar chart. Okay, and the time that I'm referring to is, um, you know, right in here between basically nine and nine thirty. Okay, fifty two oh five, fifty two oh three, and again, you know, just put it in reference from overnight. You know, overnight we're trading up at uh, fifty. You know, go back here, right, fifty two forty five, fifty two not 50, but, you know, above 45. So this is a, you know, market that sold off 45 points, okay? And it actually got down to uh, 51, 94 and a quarter, rallied back up to, to uh, 18 and three quarters, and then it starts coming back down. Then you see big bids coming in here, okay? And they failed. Now you see the market is continuing to sell off. All right, so let's take a look here at this fresh liquidity. Now, how do you define fresh liquidity? Right, I, I earlier I talked about 
Fresh liquidity, I talked about resting liquidity. Resting liquidity is orders that is sitting in the book. So for example, right, if the market comes down, you know, there's probably bids down here, you know, when we're trading 52.45, you know, bids in there at 10, at seven, you know, six, five, that is resting liquidity. But when the market trades through those prices, right, clears out that liquidity. So all this resting liquidity that was here, from you know 13, 11, 10, 9, 8, that's all cleared out. Market bounces back, and then you see fresh, strong bids coming in. Okay, so let's take a look at the footprint. Okay, so just uh, here, I'll try and fit it on my screen. Okay, it's nine o'clock, right? We trade, well, you know, earlier, right? Cash open, we're trading below 5,200, right? We're trading, we rally up to 50, you know, what is that? You know, 18 and three quarters. Then you start coming back down, nine o'clock, right? We got this big bar where we trade basically from 14 down to, you know, four and a quarter, going sideways a little bit, right? Because remember, we just traded 05, right? At this bar at nine o'clock, right? You just trade 05 at the bar at 903, 904, 905. But at this point here, right, you see the market starts going up. There's a big bid that comes in and, and you can see it in here, right? It's holding for basically two minutes, right? You can see finally here it fails, but you can see the volume, 2,226. So that's basically about 3,000 here on the bid. That is fresh liquidity. How do I define it as fresh liquidity? Because it's just in an area that we were just trading. It wasn't sitting in the order book, right? If this 3,000 contracts that traded over these three minutes was in the order book, you would see it here, right? You wouldn't trade through it like we did here. You can see only 185 traded through it. But then when it came in here, right, it's holding, right? The bar, it shot up. Next bar came down. Trade 600, went back up, right? This bar opened up, went higher because you know people realize there's a big bid in here at 05. This big bid is trying to support the market. Okay, and then it starts coming back down. It's getting hit, right? You can see it trades out. Right? It's got a big negative delta minus 22.97, but it, it trades out. And then the market's now looking for more liquidity. How do I know? Because I see there's lack of liquidity trading here on the volumes, right? On the offer side, it's 10030. Even on the bid side, 57, 67, 43, 88. That's very thin volume. And oftentimes when you get through a big volume level, the market runs a bit fast because you know sometimes there's people that are you know trying to scalp this big bid here. By scalp it, I mean, you know, they're going to jump in front at, at two and a quarter, maybe try to sell it, or sorry, at five and a quarter, maybe try to sell it at, you know, at six and a quarter, or even six and or five and three quarters, you know, just trying to scalp a few ticks out of it, and they're going to place a stop right here. We break there, market drops down immediately from 05 down to 02. That's a three-point drop, not three ticks, three points, okay? And then, you know, it goes down to 02. Then another big bid comes in here at 03. You see the 1500. This is also fresh liquidity. It's not holding the market. It just trades through it really quick. So I got, you know, the 2000 here plus the 620 plus the 450. So, you know, you're looking at close to 3000 here. Another 1500 is coming in here, two points below. Okay, it's not holding the market. So you know this market has some strong directional trading taking place because normally, right, on a sort of on, on a normal day, normal, you know, a market that's rotating around, um, you know, big bids or big offers come in and it's going to act as support or resistance. But we just blow through the first level, second level comes in, we blow through that immediately, right? This happened very early in the bar, right? This It's not just rotating around like it did here for three minutes. This big bid came in, someone whacked it. Right, and the market even in this bar drops from 03 down to 98 and a quarter. Next bar gets down to 97 and three quarters. Next bar gets down to 97 and a quarter. Then you start rotating around between you know 5200 and and back up to 03. And what do you see? Right, again, you're trading in that area for one, two, three, four, five, six bars, seven. Look at this volume: 597, 1400. Fresh liquidity is still coming in here, so there's still a strong buyer. Now, again, we don't know. The only person that knows why this 
why there's some strong bids coming in here, you know, from 05, 03, 00, is the person trading it. Okay. And remember, you know, yesterday we did have a nice big rally. Okay. You know, from basically from 85 all the way up to 55 overnight, basically going sideways around 45. This morning we're selling off. So maybe the person that's buying in here, they could be covering from yesterday. We don't know. But what we do know is we have strong bids that's not acting as support as we would normally expect it. So if we know we have strong bids in the market that's not acting as support, what do we infer from that? Well, we infer that we're probably in a flow driven market that anytime there's big size, you know, it's probably going to fail. It's not going to um, necessarily react and um, look for a, a big bounce off the market off that off that level and you can see we did trade back up to 05 and then now you know right now we're trading where are, where are we 87 so we're, we're, we're in a flow driven market and when you're in a flow driven market you got to understand that you can't necessarily trade with a tight stop because you're going to get bounces right and again you know if you are shorting it in here seeing after this failure, this failure, maybe you're getting short, you know, around 5,200. You know, if you got a, a two point stop, you know, you got to give it more leeway, right? You can see it even trades all the way back up to 06 before it breaks. I mean, so again, if you're shorting at 5,200, right now we're trading, you know, in the mid 80s. Okay. Now, take what I just talked about. Okay. And, and we're going to go back um, a couple of days to. I think it was Wednesday, right? Once the CPI came out, today's Friday. Um, so that was on the 10th. And something kind of similar, but it was a case where it held. Now, if you remember, right, on earlier in the week, right, CPI came out, big drop down, okay? Went back up, started selling off. Then we, we came back down around this 85 area, bounced back up to, to 14, sort of the way it's looking today. You know, we're coming back down to 85. We'll see if we bounce back up to 14 or not. But uh, let's take a look at that move. Where are we here? I think it was around 12, so if I remember correctly. Yeah, 1211. Okay, so don't worry about these lines. These are from today. But you can see this market. This was on Wednesday. Now, this is a case where the fresh liquidity is holding, okay? And it did run into some resting liquidity, but fresh liquidity is also coming in. So we drop down from basically 52, um, you know, 14. We get all the way down to 85, right? Again, 85, a nice number. You know, nice whole number. Trade 18 contracts. First time. Second time we trade, you know, 417. Third time we trade 1,069. Now this at 85, okay, to me is resting liquidity because it's there, you know, as the market is coming down. But what is very important to notice, this 807, this is big size, okay? 807 coming in here at 85 and a quarter. And what's important about it is because we just traded 85. Trade 85 and a quarter here and again here. And actually, we, we again, we trade down to 85. But this 807, this is a new order coming in. So you have the resting liquidity at 85. And just off of that, you have a strong bid coming in, this 807. Okay, and again, you know, we trade through it get down to 85, one tick through it. Again, it's not the end of the world that it trades one tick through it. But more importantly, you have a strong bid coming in ahead of resting liquidity and it's holding. How do I know it's holding? It's because it's not getting through it and the market is starting to trade above it, right? If it starts failing, I would look at it the same way I looked at today's action, right? Then it starts rallying, right? You get nice, um, you know, positive delta on this bar, nice buying imbalances. You got like six here market starts going up right as and as it's going up what do you see on this move up this bar here nice big green candle markets looking for more liquidity how do i know is because people are tripping over themselves trying to buy you can see all these buying imbalances 
very thin volume here, two, two, one, zero, there's a bunch of zeros. And then boom, somebody sits here on the bid at 98 for 2,300 contracts. So this buyer here at 98 probably started down here around 95, just swept the market all the way up to 98, sat on the bid to support the market, okay? And what does it do? Does it hold? It holds. Market goes higher from 98 and a quarter, gets all the way up to double O and a quarter, comes back down, trades through it, trades three contracts through it. Again, not the end of the world. It trades three contracts through it, goes back up. Similar, strong bids coming in here at, at five and three quarters, 1,400. Market's still running. Get some more strong bids up here, 1,000, 1,999. You know, that's 3,000 contracts right there. You know, then it just sort of goes sideways. Then you still got a strong bid coming up here on this red candle, 1,000, right? This is like FOMO, right? If, if you're trying to picture what FOMO looks like in the order flow, this is what it looks like. And it was all key, you know, for the, you know, the, the trader that's really more advanced, because to be honest, it's more of an advanced concept watching the actual volumes in here and understanding this is fresh liquidity that came in right here. You know, you key in on this, but maybe you're not convinced yet, right? Maybe you want to see some more activity, you know, by the time this bar comes in with, you know, the strong delta, the strong buying imbalances, you should be sort of ready to take advantage of it. Right. And again, it's a move from basically 90, 91, 92, all the way up to, you know, I'm not saying that you'd hold it all the way up to here, but, you know, it's, it's a nice move, you know, an easy uh, 10 points. Right. And then you get that bar. These are those bars that you're like, ah, yes, thank you, God. Um, you know, where it just jumps from 92 and a half all the way up to double O. So, you know, I, I, Hope you can start to understand the importance of not just resting liquidity, right? People that trade on a book map, on, on a heat map, um, watching the dome, they're all watching resting liquidity. But really, you know, if you could focus on fresh liquidity coming into the market, I think it's just as important as resting liquidity, okay? Because, you know, that continuous flow of fresh liquidity, I mean, there's always fresh liquidity coming in, but when I'm referring to fresh liquidity, I'm talking about big size coming into the market. Um, you know, it, it creates new trading opportunities for you, right? As you know, and again, new buy and sell orders are constantly being placed in the market, right? And, you know, when you see that fresh liquidity for size come in, pay attention to it. Watch how the market is reacting to it. All right. So again, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, you know, very close to uh, hitting some milestones on subscribers. So, you know, thanks. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye bye.